We go out now to near Berea, if not Berea itself, and joining us from the Cleveland Plain Dealer on the phone is uh, reporter Tom Reed from the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Tom, how are you? Oh, very good. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming on. So the Browns obviously have a new look, not only on offense, but in the front office. Uh, what's the mood like out there when you're walking around the Browns training facility? Do people feel like there is a change coming? Is this inevitable that the front office is on its last days, or do they feel like they're going to have a legitimate shot with the new ownership? Well, I think I think the coach, and I, I, I do think uh, Tom Hecker, the general manager, I think are okay to start the season. I, I would be surprised if anything happened with either one of those guys, especially now. Heck, or the coach, uh, Shermer, is fine. I mean, this was going to be a big year, regardless if there was an ownership change for him or not. Uh, you know, the, Mike Holmgren is the one I think everyone's kind of waiting on, because if this thing does get fast-tracked and gets taken care of before the start of the season, uh, uh, then you may, you may see a change. But I think right now... Uh, uh, Jimmy Haslam has said that you know, until anything is finalized, he's not going to be involved in any kind of decision making uh, with with personnel in front office or with players. Now, again, if this thing gets taken care of in the next couple weeks, and it, we're using history as our judge here, recently with Jacksonville, it took about 15 days from the time the deal was finalized until the time the league voted on. So we'll see. Obviously, Joe Banner is supposed to be coming in here. Uh, you would have to think at some point he's going to be part of this group, and where that leaves Mike Holmgren could be out. What do you think, Tom? Do you think that Holmgren wants to stick around? I mean, I know that he's obviously not a young guy anymore. Do you think that he wants to, to stick around with another ownership group, or do you think he's ready to move on personally? Well, I, I, I don't know if there's a choice there. I think he's either going, they're either going to let him stay or he's going to be out. Uh, you know, he's, he's, I think he turns 65 next year. Um, there's always been the kind of, you know, people have wondered, you know, Tom Heckert seems to be the guy making the personnel decisions, what what Holmgren's role actually has been. Uh, you know, this is my first year on the beat. But that, that's the sense I've gotten is that, you know, Holmgren really wasn't around at maybe as, as much as most people would think he should be. So, you know, we can say this for sure. If, if he's staying, he's going to be around a lot more on a, in the Jimmy Haslam era. And, again, there's, there's still a, a chance that he may not be here and Joe Banner could be the guy that's, that's uh, overseeing everything. Tom Reed, Cleveland Plain Dealer, joins us here on The Fan. Uh, Tom, big injury came over the weekend. We found out about Chris Gokon going out. Linebacking core already is thin. Are they at a mode now where they're going to say, all right, we have to bring in some of these rookies that we've drafted? Do you, what do they expect to be able to do now that they've lost a, a significant starter on the defense yet again? Yeah, you're going to see you're going to see uh, uh, JMJ come in. Johnson will come in. I would think, he, and you're going to see Malula, who finished the season last year, uh, uh, be playing as well. I think those are the two that you're going to see right away. Uh, the, the news today out of the NFL office may give the Browns some encouragement. Uh, they were supposed to be without uh, Scott Fujita for the first three weeks of the season. There's now some hope that 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 suspension, along with some of the other players' suspensions, are reduced. And if they could get that down to a game, or, you know, who knows, if they waive it entirely, that would be huge for the Browns because it is a position that was need and was thin to begin with. So if they can get if they can get uh, Vegeta back in the first after the first week of the season, that would be a big break for them. No doubt. I think that's something that I think when every Browns fan saw and heard that there might be some movement with the Jonathan Vilma situation, they looked right at Scott Fujita and said, okay, well, if that's going to happen there, what about our guy? Let's talk, well, though, about – oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, the other thing, of course, is I think we'll, what we will see with, with uh, the exhibition season starting Friday night in Detroit, uh, they will have a week or two to kind of look at this group that they have in there now, and if they may, they may have to go out and try to make a move uh, to shore that up because – as bad as the Browns were record-wise last year, that wasn't a bad defense. I mean, I think they finished in the, the top ten of the league. Uh, wasn't a real bad defense, and uh, I'm sure that they don't want to have to take a step back if they don't have to. And if you know, if they can go out and maybe make a deal to bring another guy in, but this will at least give them a couple weeks right away to see if these guys are going to be able to play to that standard. 
Early on, how is it? Uh, how how has Trent Richardson looked so far? And also with Whedon out there, I mean, how have those guys uh, looked so far in the, the the early on? Well, obviously, we'll know more after Friday, right? right. I mean, when we we'll start seeing uh, another team hit the Browns, um, Richardson has been pretty good. I think. I think the you know he's he's been, he's looked pretty good. Uh, he he missed one day of practice with some headaches. It wasn't it was not a, it was not a concussion, but he's looked uh, as as advertised. Uh, Whedon started very slowly in training camp, um, and I think, of course, part of that is just adjusting to a new group of receivers, getting down the offense. He was, you know, his entire career pretty much was spent outside the huddle, you know, in a shotgun formation. He's having to get used to, to, to playing under center, so there are a lot of adjustments. Uh, he's looked better the last three or four days, uh, much better. So, but of course, we'll we'll see for sure uh, starting on Friday. Tom Reed, Cleveland Plain Dealer, joins us here on the fan. Uh, Tom, do you get the sense that when a guy like Kevin Cobb goes down in a heap like he did last night in that preseason game, that all the Browns front office guys grab their cell phones and go, "Oh wait, someone calling about Colt McCoy? Do we have a have a take or what? <laughs> or is it? Are that I mean? Are, do do you think that they are actively still trying to work a deal to get him out of there, or do you think that they're giving him a shot as they've somewhat said, and it seems like they keep kind of wavering on it? Do you think they're going to give him a shot to stick around and be the number two, or even possibly win the job? Well, I don't think he's got a chance. To, I don't believe at this point he has a chance to win the job. But I, I've never understood the, the thinking of getting rid of him before the training camp started because there was no market for him for, at all. So you wait a couple of weeks, as you, as, you, as you alluded to, you already have an injury to a starting quarterback, and give it another week or two, and I bet you you'll have maybe another uh, injury to a starting quarterback. And you know what? It could be it could be uh, Whedon. So I, I never understood the thinking of, Let's get rid of him before training camp even starts. And the other thing is you don't know is if we can play. I mean, you know, I don't know if you would go out and, and, and if, I don't think this is going to happen, but if Brandon Whedon, through three weeks of training camp, isn't very good, why would you give away a quarterback that's had 20 starts in the NFL? I think what the, my guess is, my thinking all along on this was they would keep McCoy for the first two or three exhibition games. You know, first of all, Maybe he goes out and plays fairly well, drives up the market to where it's maybe a fourth, you get a fourth round pick for him, or maybe you just keep him. Maybe they just decide to keep him, and uh, if Whedon's not playing well, give Whedon a little bit more time. But I, I just never understood the idea of getting rid of him right away. No, I can understand that. And Tom, we appreciate the time today. I got to say, man, <laughs> knowing that you came from covering the Blue Jackets to now covering. The Browns, the Indians, and the Cavs, you got to feel like you're covering winning franchises here compared to what you were covering here in Columbus, man. <laughs> well, I, I went from covering four years of the Blue Jacks, and don't forget they did have their one playoff run, but then I covered the Cavs last year, and I'm covering the Browns. I, I've seen a lot of L's. <laughs> but hopefully things will things will turn around in Columbus for the third, third time's fans. a charm, Tom. I hope so. Jackets have yeah. never made the playoffs without you covering them, Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure that was it was me. <laughs> Tom Reed, so Cleveland I, Plain Dealer. We always appreciate the time, man. Thanks again. Thank you very much.